Morning and welcome to Manchester. It is Saturday the 19th, six days until ho ho ho. Today's walk around and rant is going to be a little bit more highbrow. We're going to be discussing morality, uh, cosmology, aesthetics and theology. <gasps> The Victorians in England, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, had a very strong uh, belief in the connection between morality, ethics, and uh, beauty, like uh, things which are beautiful and aesthetic and appealing. And they weren't completely far off because, of course, you know, ugly people can be moral. But uh, in terms of what is good for you, what is good for your family, what is good for society, making things look nice. I'm not saying this is nice, but there's architecture behind me. Making it look nice to create a nice environment can maybe give you more peace. Think of Brett Easton Ellis, the American writer, when he wrote uh, American Psycho in the 80s, which was then made into a Christian Bale movie with Jared Leto in it. Um, I think living in these soulless high-rise New York type apartments, which have sprung up all over the world we now have this hegemony this globo homo now globo homo it doesn't mean what you might think it means it means global homogeneity everything being identical so soulless futureless pastless timeless anonymous big high rises may lead to psychopathy to bring a bit of cosmology into it as well like you know all around the world there's um software software how do we run this morality religion theology and it's clear that on a kind of spiritual level yes human beings are equal your worth as a sentient being is exactly the same whether you're somali american bangladeshi nigerian swedish icelandic you're all the same inherently but what is different obviously is software religions culture what are you looking at? You're right, mate. So you can say all people are equal, all races, all genetics are equal, but what you instill in the mind of the people is not always equal. Now, people get upset anyway behind me. This is where the, the lady came out and uh, tried to stop the filming the other day. And then on the other side, you had the, the complainers. So of course, like I would say, for example, now let's keep it non-controversial. Christianity as a software, not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's true. As a software thing for the minds of the masses, for men, women, children throughout the last 2000 years, Christianity has been more successful than other religions at creating an equitable, fair, okay nation with a justice system, with human rights, with uh, 24 hours in custody before then you need to be charged or you need to be released such a concept as beyond the reasonable reasonable doubt in court so there's a lot of things that christianity gives also now that it's fading we're getting anti-natalists like nutters but christianity very much an obsession with babies fertility baby jesus do as thou father did you know create like the creator is creating so go forth and create i'll tell you the big problem with christianity it hasn't uh hasn't modernized, it hasn't updated its uh, metaphysics, it hasn't brought new stories. I was trying to do that a couple of weeks back. Jesus as the self, the greatest story ever told, as in let's have a bit of peace knowing that it's dogma. It's not inherently 100% true, but let's all play along in this beautiful theater of life. The world's a stage, let's get on. Now, Christianity has failed to do that. That's why churches are empty. It's why you've got urban hipsters having pugs and not babies. It's why no one believes it anymore. It's, it's why like on my channel, I might try and say a few nice things. Everyone's, oh, you're, fucking, you're brainwashed, you're brainwashed. Who's really brainwashed? So I'm watching this uh, TV show by Ridley Scott, creator of Aliens, you know, the Xenomorph. And uh, it's called Raised by Wolves, fantastically cast. Uh, I'm not gonna give any spoilers. But it's set in the very distant future, interstellar travel, big massive arcs, thousands of people on them, and the world is destroyed because of religious animosity and fighting, nuclear war, blah, blah, blah. So in the future, there's a Mithraic cult that worships Saul. Apparently this was massive back in ancient Rome, and it's, you know, it kind of got wiped out by Christianity a bit. 
but it was like an underground cult. And I don't mean like figuratively underground. It was literally underground Mithraic temples worshipping Sol. Now, what Ridley Scott's trying to say in the 10-episode uh, HBO series Raised by Wolves, which I would recommend, I'm, a, I'm on episode 9? Very, very, very interesting. I'm into that kind of thoughtful sci-fi. Sci-fi with a bit of philosophy behind it. And it goes into the whole, you know, can humanity start again as atheists? And they're cyborgs that raise fetuses to be atheists. And then the kids end up having mystical experiences. There's this yearning in humanity. So on my next rant segment, I'm going to tell you what that means. You know, scientists and atheists have their own uh, spiritual cosmology. And uh, I love it. It's, it's incredible how we use semantics, etymology, like just differences in explaining things to try and put others down or update theories when in fact all you're doing is rehashing the exact same cosmic idea again and again. I'll give you an example. Right, obviously religions have the whole creator, the creator myth, the blah 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 blah. You know, some African animist uh, tribes, they've got man made of mud and the sun and it got burnt and a snake ate it and the moon came and then a fucking other snake ate the moon and gave birth to man. You know that sort of stuff. Well, in science, it's like, look, trust, trust us. We don't know what happened at the Big Bang. We don't know why there was an infinitely small singularity. We don't know. We don't know why some black holes are really, really, really big and other ones are small, even though they're both an infinitely small singularity. Spiritual war talked about for the last few thousand years by every major religion and even the minor ones, especially the cults. It's a conceptual war. It's a war of the mind. It's a war of fear versus love. It's optimism versus pessimism. One, asp one faction in this great war, and there's many factions, one faction believes that love, family, truth, beauty, aesthetics, reality, and the future are all worth it. For all the pain, for all the trouble, for all the horribleness, it's worth it. That's optimism. The main other faction, of which there are many different groups, says that reality is not worth it. The future is certainly not worth it. We are nothing but a plague, a dirty biological flesh and blood robot that is destroying the planet that doesn't need to be here. Massive factions. And like, my uh, blood pressure got really uh, elevated this morning. So I was going back into the whole... Um, you know, there's propaganda on TV. There's uh, people, Mike Pence. Mike Pence has had the, the mRNA vaccine. And then I start thinking, hold on a second. I'll be more reassured when I see the children of the elites, people of fertile age or soon to be fertile age, wanting to start a family, when they're taking the vaccine, when there isn't enough data to see if it affects fertility or not, then I'll be pacified. But when you've got old men, people in their 60s, 70s, that first lady, 91, does she really care about her fertility? So when I start seeing the teenage children of the super rich and super powerful, when they start having the vaccine on TV, then we'll talk. Because I don't mean to be Mr. Randy Pan tinfoil hat man, but uh, I'm too worried. I wouldn't take things that haven't been tested. It even says on it, we do not know if this new vaccine affects fertility. Who would take that? I'll tell you who would take that. The people in the great spiritual war in the faction that hates the future. You know, you've got, you see stories in the papers of people who are 18 years old having a vasectomy. You know, you got women in their early 20s in London having hysterectomies. So they do exist and you know what, they will, they will whip out, they will wheel out super young people to have this vaccine. But I want to see children of the elites who want a family lining up to take the new experimental jab in their arm. Now, what is probably the truth, <coughs> excuse me, it probably won't do anything. It's probably absolutely fine. But since when, do we put something inside five billion people that may be okay? No, 
It needs to be known that it's okay. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, people like me start worrying that something's afoot up, up in the great cloud. And we humans, you know, Carl Jung, I'll end this segment. It's been three and a half minutes. Carl Jung, he wrote something in, uh, I think it was called The Self, or there's some metaphysical book he was writing. And he said that the perception of man, of a human, you realize you're at once the main protagonist. You are the alpha and the omega protagonist, but also at the exact same time, you're a minor extra, a bit part player, a backgrounder in someone else's reality where they are the protagonist. Now how it's done, I guess you'd need to be an infinite computational mind to figure that out, but I'm just to plant my flag. Get it? Wait, plant, plant my flag. I am firmly in the camp that believes reality is worth it. The future's worth it. Having children is worth it. Striving to have amazing things is worth it. I don't know why I tapped my chest there, but it probably sounds and looks dramatic. So let's go into central Manchester. That's enough metaphysics for today. Let's go and have some drama. One last thing I want to say. Oh, let me say, oh, let's run the cross. Oh, shit. Right. The cannon fodder of my adversaries, I guess, the, the, the hordes of people. And you see them. They come out of the woodwork. There is a massive army of bitter and twisted souls out there who are waiting for artists, musicians, actors, entrepreneurs, their neighbor, their best friend. They're, they're waiting there for anyone who strives to look at the heavens, who strives to see, to hold the hand of the angels to bring down some transcendental, stunning, amazing beauty into this world. Your mass hordes, when they see someone trying to do that, they like nothing more than to rip that person down, slit their throat, and ha 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 at them. Laugh their fucking brains out like hyenas at the stupid humans who thought they could do something amazing or special or incredible. No, 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 no. You get back in your effing box and ha ha ha, we will tear you apart in the media, in the press. We will insult you. Anyone that tries anything different, you'll see. And the hordes, they are, the hordes of orcs and demons that try and pull you down into hell. Or you're leaving Plato's cave, you're like, hold on a second, those are, those are shadows on the wall, there's a there's a passageway, it's a bit tight, but I'll get through it. It's like the ending of the film THX 1138 with uh, Robert Duval. That is an incredible representation of the allegory of Plato's cave. Now the people that are in Plato's cave that either don't know they're in the cave or they're too scared to try to leave the cave, feel their claws on your ankles as they dig in. How dare you try and escape? That's all I have to say about those orcs. Them from moving, here you go. What's that say? Oh! Grown up chocolate bars. That's my favorite. That one's good. I want to take you to a. <laughs> and the poor chocolate man, he's getting told off by the council. Council, leave him alone. have the most expensive Nike trainers. Hello mate, how are you? Very well yourself? Good. Oh, how are we doing? I'm very well. Okay, I'm here with GMP. Is a gentleman that has just, he's clearing up uh, Piccadilly. Anything to say to my viewers? Happy Christmas to everybody. Well, stay sober because everybody seems to be drunk today. And what about smoking a bit of the... Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that either? Don't do that. Okay, okay. fair enough. You heard it. You heard it. Illegal. You heard don't it from it. the police, guys. Have a good Christmas. Good morning from sunny Piccadilly Gardens. 
the uh, god botherers have taken over the plinth of Queen Victoria. So uh, I just want to touch upon, because people have been asking the comments section, and it's big national news. The chief inspector, the boss man of Greater Manchester Police has resigned following a damning report by the central government down in London uh, saying that Greater Manchester Police has had to be put into special measures which is like, uh, I guess, the, the big boys come in to take over. And uh, what they're saying in the press is that Greater Manchester Police failed to record 80,000 crime incidents. Now, scratching my head, what does that even mean? How do they know they failed to report it if it's not reported? How do you know? And then, so, I've been walking around the city centre chatting to every policeman who will give me the time of day, asking them, What's going on? What does this mean? So here's what they told me. And it ties into what I suspected. Let me tell you my theory. My theory as to why Greater Manchester Police has been placed into special measures is that Manchester, per capita, may be the craziest city in the UK, per capita. It's absolutely mad. And my videos will show you it's mad. I'm not inventing this. So your average Greater Manchester policeman, when he's dealing with a riot, an ongoing shoplifting crackhead riot in the city center, and then someone walks up and goes, oh, someone was uh, bad to me on social media, on Facebook. It was racist, homophobic. The police have to weigh up should the person just harden the fuck up and grow a set of balls? Or is it a really bad malicious communication that we need to spend thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money because two people had an argument on Facebook, for example? So then that goes down as an unrecorded crime. Now look, my channel's not a police praising channel, but I do believe in the truth for the truth's sake in honesty as well. And it's great to bash the police. It's great fun. But I did it over 10 years. And did they come down harsh on me? Did I get disappeared? Did I get sent to the gulag? Have I had my family threatened by the police? No. So do we live in a police state? Of course not. This is one of the freest countries in the world. And for me personally, as a filmmaker that deals a lot with city center madness and the police, Having the Greater Manchester Police use that discretion and not come down heavy with truncheons and handcuffs like the Metropolitan Police in London do, it's a good thing. So when you read in the paper like, ah, oh, Greater Manchester Police is failing massively, maybe they're winning massively, but someone didn't like the Chief Inspector, so they put together a dossier, sexed up, and he's had to resign. So there you go. Busy it is on Market Street. It's just like true Monty Python scenes of uh, MCC COVID marshals walking in massive crowds of people. But you know what? Life goes on, Christmas goes on, business goes on, and I think most people are kind of weary, jaded, and uh, bored of the regulations. You see, most people wear the mask just because it's easier. Anyway, we've got some bearded guy here talking about the solstice. Pagan? I guess. And we walk along just to show you how busy the street is. But it's peaceful. There's a good vibe. And so, let's talk philosophy. When the crackheads were in charge, there was a bad vibe. Now that a monopoly on a force has been brought in, as in these people, it's very peaceful. Now, some people have been saying to me, oh, I thought you didn't like the police. Didn't like, well, look, I'm ambivalent towards the police, but you need them. So you're gonna have a massive society. What are you gonna have? 20 vigilante groups all getting it wrong, fighting off each other. No. Ho, ho, ho. And 
they stop playing just as I do the selfie. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> Check out who it is behind the tram. It's young preacher boy. He is not scared. After his uh, crackhead incident where he had to get his head glued in, glued in, glued back together. Here he is, doing what he does best, preaching Christianity. All we need is a little bit of compassion and encouragement. Of course, love, but compassion and encouragement. If we gave that to each other, if we held each other close and said it was okay, if we didn't just try and spout out solutions at people, if we just listened for a moment and just felt empathetic with them, that yeah, it is very hard. Something begins. I'm noticing a, a higher concentration of police than you'd normally expect. I think... I think it's the anti-lockdowners again. I think. Check out these ladies! They're giving out free stuff! Say hello, ladies! Say hello! They're giving out free stuff to the people! Exactly! Now, how good is that? Look! People are like, oh, dogmatic Christians, but it's hard to do anything. The fact that these ladies are out here giving free food and drink to the people, of course they want to preach some Christianity, but who cares? It's nice. Just check out the amount of fluorescence. This is like a scene in Avatar when they're running through the forest at nighttime. Preach your boy, preach, preach, preach. No, he got shy because he saw me filming. I saw the whole world God. Now you saw me filming. Hello. Hello. What's your first name so I can say hello back? Alex. Alex. Hello, Alex. Did you see my videos from the previous? No, I haven't. Oh, mate. I've had a conversation with you before. Thank you. Oh, I didn't recognize you with the mask on. And there I was shooting the shit with the police surveillance guys, one of whom recognized me from the King Street Kadem days. And, uh... What's going on here? They want your health slavery. A reset scam. Okay, did you read that, guys? So uh, I'm having a nice chat with the police surveillance guys, these two here, quite friendly, but as soon as the banners come out, here comes the uh, overt intimidation. Guys, forgive me for filming you guys, but it's the most interesting thing here at the moment. I'm gonna try and get a shot of what's on the viewfinder. What's on his viewfinder? Oh, he closed it. We were getting on so well. Yeah, guys, get, get that lady. She needs to go in the gulag. Get her on the government database. That guy there, he's saying great reset. That's it. That's anti Bill Gates. Better, yep. You may recognize it's the councillor, the mayor. You're the mayor, Pat Carney. You call the anti lockdowners an absolute disgrace. What do you mean, did I? Come on, let's have a conversation about it. What do you mean by absolute disgrace? I, I don't do interviews, I'm, I'm too shy. But we're doing one right now? I know, I'm too shy. But do you think that they should be- You won't be able to talk me into it as well, because I'm too shy, Charlie. You're not too shy, yeah. you're a public official. Yeah. Anyway, for the 30 seconds, thank you anyway. That's okay. Check out the markets of food. It's as busy as any normal year, and I like it. It's reassuring. This is the old normal.
are you? That is clearly a 120 pound fine for lettering. Hello. Hiya. Any hate crimes committed over here yet? Any hate crimes? Everything is totally back to normal. There's only so much uh, fear and bother people will put up with, I guess. Back to absolutely normal. Oh, it's the the white Jamaicans. He sings in a Jamaican accent. Oh, it's the dancer. There he is. Well, there you go. Hello, hello, usual suspects. the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. We were all brought up to believe that we'd all be movie gods, rock stars and millionaires, but we're not. We've been sold a lie. Marla, you goddamn tourist. Marla, you met me at a very interesting point in my life. Hello, everybody. Shalom. This is Daniel Cohen from the Krav Maga Club in Tel Aviv. I'm very happy to see the Gentile Hero Training Club here in Sunny Manchester, very good use of the symbol and you go in, you see, you got to do it good. The most important thing for Israeli special forces Come on, come on, it's too... Fucking, no, that's a section ruined. Hey everyone. Let's have some closing thoughts from me. I think more than health or exercise or being politically active in the right way, whatever you consider the right way, uh, what's more important than all that is just meditating and thinking. And um, I've got a little experiment for you guys as a closing thought. I'm trying to get a nice little background, some LED lights. We're at the uh, co-op headquarters. There's the old one. 196 where's my arm there it is but they've got these weird things here and they're already failing like at night time it's meant to be like beautiful lights creating messages that scrolls back and forth meditate on this rack your brain do everything you can to try and imagine how physical processes atomic structures molecules arrange to create a subjective self I find that fascinating. I almost got there a few years back. I got fascinated with um, Robert Lanza and his biocentrism. And then that led me on to Stuart Hameroff, who's actually a neurosurgeon, a, a neuroscientist. And uh, you'll have heard of Roger Penrose, again, a, a neurologist, neuroscientist, philosopher. And uh, they found structures in your um, neurons, in your synapses, called microtubules. And they said that probably quantum processes are happening. Uh, within those microtubules, the way that, you know, D-Wave, Google will try and explain to you about qubits, you know, in traditional computing, it's binary, you got one or zero. So to have like parallel processors running at a very high frequency, millions of gigahertz, great, but you're only going to get X amount. Now the qubits, uh, what Stuart Hammerhoff found in the mind, and then what they're trying to do with quantum computers is to have uh, a state that's, uh, it's, um, I love this. It's either one or zero, or it's both. Now, it's, it makes zero sense, much like um, that old guy, great guy, what was his name? Richard, Richard Feynman, 
said that if you understand quantum physics, you're a liar. He was like the world's main profe prof professor, professor of quantum physics, and he didn't understand it. So, in the brain, you can have little electrical charges that are either a one or a zero, or either or. That's incredible. That goes against logic. That goes against your very reason. I'm fascinated by it. Look up microtubules by uh, Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose. Try and figure out how data, sensory data, whether it's photons or um, vibration from heat or um, molecules picked up by uh, your nose to create a smell. Where does that go? And, you know, with the Stuart Hameroff microtubule quantum processes in the mind, I got there to the zenith of that way of thinking. And then suddenly I was back into the left, back into the left. I got hit back into the left by the realization that uh, no matter how complicated your brain is, how many quantum processes are happening, it's great. You could do all that on a desktop, but to have the full subjective self-experience, there still needs to be a person, a somebody, a viewpoint. A, uh, yeah, a viewpoint needs to be there, experiencing it. Like, what's his name? Oh God. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. He wrote a book called Consciousness Explained. And he's very, oh, Daniel Dennett was his name. Dennett, Dennett, Dawkins, all that lot. Dennett said, uh, again, it's all just physical processes and he called the uh, consciousness an illusion. What the fuck does he even mean by that? You know, Descartes in the 1500s, or was it 1600s? He, he said it. I think, therefore, I am. The only thing you can be certain of is that you are. You, I am. And uh, Daniel Dennett's trying to say that that's an illusion and that's not real. Well, let me come back at you. We're getting up to four and a half minutes. Let's keep this under five minutes. Meditate on infinity, meditate on eternity, meditate on where the hell consciousness comes from. Think about the greatest feelings you've ever had in terms of brotherhood, compassion, love, and empathy. And then try and imagine, just by chance, atoms coming together, molecules coming together, and all of a sudden you literally have a transcendental consciousness, God, experiencing things. Something's missing, guys. And once you realize that something's missing, you will have peace, you will have happiness. And this is less than five minutes of yes! Now I can't pretend I don't need to defend some part of me from you. I know I've spent some time a lying. Oh God, I didn't press off. This is awkward now. That was Interpol, the new. Hey Charlie, uh, what street are you on? I'm just gonna check the sign. That's where I am. I forgot to say one last thing. Uh, with quantum computing, if you're a qubit, if you can be either a one or a zero, that means you have infinite potential. So we're bringing infinite potential into the mind, into computers. What is infinite potential? What is that field? What is infinity? That's what I'd like you to ponder on. What are you doing, Dad? Uh, videoing. Videoing you guys trying to make it. Yeah. Give me your hand, this is cliffhanger with Stallone. Don't fall down, there you go. Leo, quick, give me your hand. Here, I'll save you, I'll save your life. Okay. You getting a bit cheerful, Isaac? Is it getting better? Good baby. What are you guys doing? 